first time I did an injection. I was really nervous. I was really nervous. And it was just because it was something new. You know, you're starting out on classmates that you don't know very well. You don't really know their personalities, how they handle pain. And here you're all nervous, you know, your hands are shaking and everything. After that first time, first couple of times maybe for some people, once you cross that hurdle, it's, it's like a sigh of relief. You're like, whew, did it, good, I can keep on going. And intradermal is that one you just go right underneath the first layer of skin. We typically do intradermal injections for tuberculosis, allergy testing. It's done on the forearm or in the back. We're only actually injected into the epidermis of the skin, which is actually the top layer of the skin. And what we're going to do is try to create a wheel. We know we're successful if we get a wheel or a bleb. We're gonna use standard precautions in everything we do. We're gonna wash our hands first and then we're going to pick a site where we're going to go. We typically teach in the upper forearm. We wanna stay away from veins. We wanna stay away from the superficial veins that we can see, we just stay away from those. Typically tattoos, if there's a tattoo that is a year or less, we wanna stay away from. Burns, scars, anything like that. What we're going to use is the forearm. A trick would be grabbing from the wrist to the inner elbow, and this would be your safe zone, or you can come towards the middle. And these are the supplies needed for our intradermal injection. We inject for teaching purposes. This is 9% sodium chloride. This is just salt water. And we use a one millimeter, 25 gauge, 5 8 inch needle for the intradermal. And we need an alcohol prep to swipe our vial with. And we have two by twos and our gloves. Now we're ready to fill the syringe uh, for our intradermal and we're taking our needle and I open up the syringe and I lube it so it doesn't stick. These have a tendency to stick. And then I'm going to draw up the amount of the dosage that's been ordered. And this is 0.1 cc. And we always must swipe the top of our vial. And I'm going to inject the air that the amount of medication that I'm going to use, and I've injected the air, and now I'm going to aspirate my dosage. We want to get rid of the little bubbles, and so we do a little tap. And we don't want bubbles because that takes up some of our dosage. So we tap it out, and I am bubble free, and we are set. We have our correct dosage, and we do the one-handed scoop. We are ready for the patient. Now that we have all of our supplies ready, we have our syringe filled. Our first line of defense will be to uh, put on our gloves. I'm gonna show you the method that we teach. And the trick to this is tight skin. We need to have tight skin and I'm going to measure. If you'd like to come around and watch, I'm going to measure and I'm gonna use three fingers from the wrist and I use four from the antecubital. And you can go anywhere in this area. We're gonna stay away from visible veins. I can see a vein there. She has no scars or tattoos or burns that we need to watch for. So I know I'm gonna go in about that area. And then we use the honey bun or the swirl technique. And I start right there and I'm gonna swirl out. And we're getting all the microbes out of the way. And the trick to this is the skin has to be taut or tight. And this is for tuberculosis. We're going to do the TB. 
and I take the syringe and I have four fingers on the bottom and I have my thumb on the top. I take note, I can see my medication. You always want to be able to see your medication. And it's still at the right dosage, which is good. I have my bevel up. Bevel must be facing up. And I'm going to grab a hold of the skin from the top and I'm going to pull. And my fingers will pull from the bottom and we have a nice tight skin. And this just barely falls under a few layers of skin and then we come back and we inject. When you put the needle bevel side up underneath the first layer of skin, when you shoot the injection in, because it's underneath the first layer of skin, your skin will raise and it makes like a wheel. And I always tell my students when I start them on that, a lot of kids did this in middle school, high school. They take their mom's sewing needle and they barely put it underneath their skin and kind of lift up the skin. And I say that and I've got like hands all over the place. Oh yeah, I did that, I did that. I said, it's kind of the same technique. You're just barely under the skin and then you lift. What we're going to try to create is what they call a wheel, W-H-E-A-L, and that kind of looks like a bubble is what they call it. We're going to use the epidermis layer part, which is the top layer of the skin. You want to taut the skin. Inject with the bevel pointing up. You insert the needle at a 10 to 15 degree angle. You slice the needle through just like you're peeling a grape. That's how thin this injection should be. Inserting to the skin now. Hold the needle steady. Do you aspirate? Of course not. No aspiration. You do not aspirate with this injection. You don't aspirate. We don't aspirate because we don't go far enough into the muscle, to the skin. This is the only parenteral where you do not aspirate, okay? Because you're not going in deep enough to penetrate any blood vessel in the first place. Start injecting. You want to push your medication. Not too fast, not too slow. And if you're, you can't figure out how to do that, just count one, two, three. And as you're counting one, two, three, a wheel should materialize on the forearm. And that is why people love this injection, including myself, because I know if I'm successful or not because I will see the wheel. And it's, it basically looks like a mosquito bite. Okay. And we've just given the injection and we use the sheath and we dispose in the sharps container. Then after you've done all of these steps, make sure you document accordingly. Document the medication given, the expiration date. Documentation is key. Remember, if it wasn't documented, it never happened. If you don't get a wheel, it isn't a checkoff. Don't feel bad, get your experience, get your practice in, and how do you do that? By coming to class every day. Once you get the technique down and everything like that, they just come as like second nature to you.